If you own a Shopify store and are trying to rank on the first page of Google, you need to focus on the right pages. Collection pages are the most important pages on your Shopify store by far, way more so than product pages. When it comes to SEO, these are the pages that are going to be most responsible for your organic search revenue. A few reasons for this. Number one, consumer psychology indicates that customers want to shop for multiple products, aka a collection, rather than be funneled into a single product. Google reflects this by oftentimes serving far more collection and category pages on the top page of Google as opposed to product pages. You can creatively manipulate these pages to rank for more keywords, which I'll show you how to do this later on, and you can build backlinks directly to collection pages, whereas Google tends to ignore backlinks to product pages. Let's get how to do it. First step in optimizing your collection pages and ranking higher in Google, making a very few small changes to your liquid.theme files in Shopify. You don't really need to know how to code, it's a few lines of code depending on your theme, and it's quick Google search away from finding the right snippet to add. It varies by Shopify theme, so it's hard to give you do this or delete this. The best way to tackle this is quite literally just opening up Google and searching for how to split your collection description for into your Shopify theme. Follow directions. There's tons of Shopify forums, communities out there that are going to have the answer for you. The end product we're looking to do. We're not doing any major redesigns. We're looking for something like this. One to 200 words, just below the H1, short collection description, kind of an intro to the whole category. Then you'll have the product grid and you'll have the pagination if present. So let's say you have like three pages in your collection. No, that'll happen. And then below that, you'll have four to 500 words, which are a longer collection description with more details, you know, unique selling points, things like that. I'll get into all that stuff later. Before we get into how, you're probably even think, why on earth do I need to redesign my collection page? It's fine as is. Well, not really as it pertains to SEO. Just having an H1 with your target keywords is not enough. That is pretty much saying you have a blank HTML page with one keyword on your H1 and then a bunch of images. Google can't read that. Google needs way more context to trust you in order to rank it. That's where the extra five to 700 words are going to come into play. So essentially you're eliminating any thin content issues and giving yourself an actual chance to rank. If you think about this, no. Major brands like Amazon, Target, and Walmart don't have five to 700 words on every single one of their category pages. Why should you? Well, you're not them. They have thousands more backlinks than your Shopify brand, and as insignificant as a few hundred words may seem, they will actually help you overcome that backlink deficit so you actually can outrank them in search. Similarly, most Shopify stores at Audit don't do this, so you'll be ahead of 90% of your competitors just by making this one simple change and actually adding these optimizations in that I'm gonna show you. Once it's redesigned, now we're gonna actually do this. You should already have a target keyword for each collection. Place that keyword in every single one of the following locations below. H1, it'll be the name of the collection. URL slug, so collection slash target keyword. Meta title, place it as close to the front as possible. Meta description, again, as close to the front as possible, it will be bolded in search results. Meta descriptions are not a direct ranking factor, however, they can help your click through rate in search, as well as your image alt text. And then obviously we're gonna get onto the collection description itself. I haven't put that one in here, but obviously the, your keyword will be in the collection description. These are the basics. Basics won't cut it when you're competing with millions of other results, especially competitors who make way more money than you right now. Let's take a deeper look at the intro collection description, which is above the product grid, and also the detailed collection description, which is below the product grid. The goal of both of these when you're writing is to blend both search-focused and conversion-focused copy, right? You need to rank, but you also need customers to convert once they get to that page. Intro collection, 100 to 200 words. There's no right way to write this section. Here are a few of my general principles. Use your target keyword in the first sentence. This immediately reendorses with the contents of the page to Google. After, you should put it right after the H1 and the meta title. There's no right way to write this section, but here are a few of my general principles. Use your target keyword in the first sentence. This immediately reendorses what the contents of the page are about to Google after the H1 and the meta title, of course. Add a few similar or semantically related keywords. Use your brand name once towards the middle end of this intro description, and then highlight the biggest benefits slash unique selling points of the collection, right? Just mention them, don't go into detail yet. Onto the detailed collection description, which is gonna be four to 500 words below your product grid. I tend to follow this general content structure. H2, which is a very close secondary keyword, and H3, which is benefit slash USP1 with a short description under that H3. And then the second H3 is another benefit slash USP with another short description. And again, the third H3 is a, the third benefit slash third USP along with a short description. You should easily be able to write four to 500 words for this for your brand. Keep these things in mind. You should target keyword three to five times, maybe more, maybe less. Just keep it natural and use variants of it. Let's say your target keyword is collagen supplements for men. You could also use variants like men's collagen supplements. Add more similar slash semantically related keywords. Mention your brand name again, this time differentiating it from your competitors with your brand's USP. Maybe you're all organic, maybe it's vegan, free shipping. You have 10,000 five-star reviews maybe you have sustainable sourcing or packaging or whatever it may be, right? Like that's the time to differentiate yourself from your competitors without directly calling them out. For each short description, so everything under each H3, provide more information that one, adds more context for Google, and two, strengthens a customer's desire to purchase from you. You should know the three biggest benefits slash USPs of your category, so speak to those because that's where the conviction from customers is going to come and they're actually going to buy from you. And the best way to do this is honestly to use actual language from your customer reviews. It's already resonated with someone who made a purchase, so use that exact language and odds are more people are going to convert off of that. 
At this point, you're now ahead of 80% of your competition. You still need to be in the top 1%, so you've still got a little bit more to go. So let's move on to a few advanced collection optimization techniques to get you to that one spot on Google and printing organic revenue. Most brands haven't gotten to this point. If you take care of these next few steps, you will rank number one in no time, guaranteed. I'm gonna run through five techniques for optimizing your collection pages, and I'll just go through them one by one. First one, sort by customer reviews. Most brands really think about how their products are displayed on the collection page, opting for default sorting. Sometimes they do best sellers. However, users, on the other hand, always use the sort by functionality. Think about any time you bought anything online like Amazon or on a store. You always do this ordered by price or reviews or something. We've seen a lot of success with our brands by setting the collection page to automatically sort by customer reviews, highest to lowest. Obviously puts the highest rated products at the top, which users and Google seem to prefer. And though you have to do your own testing, right? Like this does tend to work across most of our brands. It doesn't work across all of them. It has worked for several. And you could play around with lowest cost or best sellers, depending on your brand, right? Just test it, run it for a few days, a few weeks, whatever, and then decide if it worked, didn't work. Second thing, build internal links to collection pages. The internet is a series of content and links. That's really like the most dumbed down version of it. Great content will never see the light of day without links and great links don't matter if the content is terrible. In the case of your collection pages, Let's break this down a little deeper here. Even if you have a perfectly optimized page, quote unquote, it is useless if it doesn't have any links pointing to it. In fact, it needs all of these links from the main menu, from the home page, from the footer menu, and from relevant blog posts. Watch my advanced Shopify SEO strategies video to see how to do this and build topical authority around your collections. Third step, build internal links between similar collections. Assuming you have a large product catalog with dozens of products, you'll likely have several similar collections. Perhaps they vary by use case, color, ICP, benefit or some other differentiating factor. There's an excellent chance that some customers may be interested in these collections as well. And you know, maybe they came on your site to look, you know, to search for one collection, maybe another one might be better for them. Give them the opportunity to explore these by internally linking to and from them within the detailed part of the collection description, which is at the bottom below the product grid. Remember to use relevant anchor text. Plus, it will help all the collections rank higher, a win-win. Four, create sub-collections. Let's say you sell laptops. Laptops is pretty competitive. Ahrefs has it at almost 80,000 searches a month. I'm sure that's even higher around Black Friday or back to school time. You know what's not as competitive as just laptops? Laptops under 500, laptops for college students, laptops for digital nomads, and laptops for video editors. Much longer tail, much lower search volume, also way more defined as an ICP, which means you're probably going to convert better than just laptops. Let's say you sell 10 laptops. You can duplicate your main collection with the exact same 10 laptop SKUs you already have, and then just re-optimize it for these other keywords, right? So you could in theory have four collections, all that have the exact same 10 laptops in it, and you could optimize them each for these four keywords, each of them for their respective four keywords that I just listed out for you. Instead of customers only being able to find you via one target keyword, they can find you through five to 10 or more. It's pretty much like you get to spread your eggs out and not put them all in one basket. Instead of just trying to rank number one, for laptops, you can instead bring in customers from all different angles and all shopping with the same laptops with much more intent. Okay, more points of entry equals more money in almost every single case. And just as with the similar collections, you can internally link between all these to boost rankings and improve user experience. Number five, build backlinks directly to the collection pages. We talked about product pages earlier. Google actually tends to ignore backlinks that point directly to product pages, but they don't ignore ones built to collection pages. This is another huge benefit of ranking collections over individual products. If you build backlinks with relevant and varied anchor text from guest posts, niche edits, and any PR links you may snag, where your Shopify collection rankings will climb to the top of Google almost in a matter of months. If you want to learn the exact strategies we use to grow one of our SEO clients from 12K to 30K in organic monthly revenue with SEO, go watch this video. And if you want to have a quick chat with me to discuss SEO for your brand, book a call below. Peace.